Hi, my name is Ed French. I'm an Oscar-nominated and Emmy Award-winning special effects makeup artist. And as you may have gathered already, this is a bit of shameless self-promotion. Whether you're uh, just a motion picture aficionado and you're interested in this stuff, or you're a, a budding makeup artist, this could be, uh, you know, uh, not a not a rich vein of knowledge, not quite the mother load, but I'd say there's some there's some valuable trinkets to be had here. Uh, for instance, what's going on in this section of the movie you're watching right now? Can you tell? I'll give you a moment to come up with an answer. No prizes uh, will be awarded for correct answers. However, you will have the satisfaction of feeling like you know something about the movie business. Yes, you are correct. You have nailed it. This actor, Norman Rodway, is having his head measured by this man, Irvin Kupitz, one of the finest wig makers in Hollywood and Germany, has taken a measurement of this man's head for a Hitler wig. Here's the background on this. I had done a film previously with the producer of The Empty Mirror, the Hitler movie. Jay Roach had called me in to uh, do uh, a short film, one day shoot, low budget, but come in, do a bunch of historical characters, out of the kit real quick, eh, you know, went by and then I get this call, come on in, we need you to do Hitler. I agreed again to come in and do uh, you know, a makeup test essentially. We, uh, Norman and I actually hit it off right, right away. I'd seen him on stage in the West End of London in a uh, restoration uh, drama called uh, Wild Oats, old John O'Keefe play. And there was Norman playing the Admiral brilliantly. And uh, of course, I'd seen him in Orson Welles' Chimes at Midnight. He was um, Henry Percy, Hotspur. And he had some great Orson Welles stories he shared with me. At the time, I was making a pretty good living as a freelance makeup artist doing TV commercials and bits on TV. And uh, this thing really wasn't going to pay a lot of money. And uh, it was also, um, I know this is going to sound funny, but I really didn't want to spend a month looking at Hitler. I, I just didn't want to, I mean, you know, you don't just do the Hitler makeup. You, you know, if you, if you know, I don't know if you realize this, but makeup artists have to touch up people during the day. They have to keep, they have to maintain the makeup. So you're always studying the makeup when it's on set. You're you're looking at it through a camera monitor and you're staring at it on set constantly and I just something about the idea of working with Hitler for more than a few days just didn't grab me so I uh, kind of blew it off and uh, the money didn't help it wasn't a temptation and uh, I know Norman was uh, disappointed and uh, I basically burned my bridges with uh, Jay Roach, who went on to produce the Austin Powers movies. This was this was the mistake, but it happens. That's Hollywood, you know. Um, a lot of it was about the money, because certainly Norman Rodway was a very fine actor. You know, it's like all I'm not a big fan of Hitler movies in general. It's usually they're always it's always some Freudian ex. Ah, there you go. That's the problem. The main problem with the Hitler movie was they'd cast Joel Grey in this Empty Mirror movie as Freud. He was playing... Joel Grey was playing Freud in a movie psychoanalyzing Hitler. Joel Grey. And he wasn't even singing and dancing. It doesn't make any sense. So there you go. There's my rationalization for blowing off the Hitler movie. Well, I didn't quite hear the end of it. I got, I got one last phone call from Norman when he uh, got wind, got the winds of war, that I was uh, taking a pass on being Hitler's makeup man. <laughs>